Everybody say, action speaks louder than words. Say it again. Action speaks louder than words. So, uh, Webs, can you put right there by the hanging thing? Yes. Now, the couple you see here, one time God woke me up and shown me together they were singing a song and I didn't know what it meant because they were doing a duet. They were doing a duet. Do you have the word duet in your language? <laughs> so each one of them had a microphone. I, I, I don't remember which one of them had a microphone, but both of them, they were singing. They were singing a song together. And uh, it sounded so good. I didn't know what it meant. So while I was getting ready earlier, the Lord reminded me what he did for my sister here and my brother. Uh, we were just, I was, I just came from coaching uh, our team. I came from coaching our team. And uh, we, the, the, both of them, her and Sister Patricia, came to my office because she had a complication in her womb. She was pregnant, and there was something wrong with the pregnancy. And uh, due to the complications of the pregnancy, the doctors were going to flush the baby out because the baby was not responding. And she, was, she had an appointment the next day to go to the doctor. And then, you know, so that means the baby is not really alive. And uh, they're supposed to take it out. But I said, you come here, let's do something here. So the, what shocked me the most is when I walked into our old office, there was a prayer room. When I walked into that room, I had the name of the boy. Jason, come here. Where is he? Bring the big boy here. Come here. Glory to Jesus. Now look at the guy coming there. And just clap to Jesus until he gets here. Clap your hands. <laughs> clap your hands to Jesus until he gets here. Amen, amen, amen. The song they were singing is a song of praise to give God glory for this testimony. Let me an amen to that. Now, what you don't realize is that when I was coming, I was just coming to pray a prayer of faith. But the Lord got there before me. And then he gave this boy a name. So that's the name I heard. So Sister Sarah and Milka, are you ready? You just by yourself? Okay, both of you, sing the song. You know my name. I want you to lift, just to meditate on God, because the Lord told me to talk about this. So, I want you to meditate on God. You know my name. You know my name. You know my name. Is the mic on? And oh, how you walk with me. And oh, how you talk with me. And oh, how you tell me that I am your 
corner man. Oh, have your way. Sing in your language now. Increase milk and the monitor. Is on pale ave. Is on uti moe. Moe se bu. Now, if you know those words, join us now one more time and declare. Is on mashe ave. One more time. Is on my share Is on pale That's number four. Is on uti moe. Jesus. Moe se Now hold on there. The reason why I call you this young guy here and his mother, because I want each one of you that is discouraged, that feel like giving up, to know that even though your situation feels like it is completely dead, God can still resurrect it. Amen. Can you interpret that, gentlemen? Can we make sure that his mic is on? They can hear me in the house. Not everybody speaks my language. Thank you. Go ahead. Look at this young man here. The Lord told me to talk about him before I do anything. I said, I, wanna, I don't want to forget. The woman you see here would have just given up. They take the baby out. Bury the body in the ground, and the child will be in heaven. The child would be in heaven, but here on earth, his life would have been closed. When you don't believe, you hinder many things. Even that which God has planned for you is delayed. But when you believe, God will resurrect it. Amen. Number two, when we forget the things God has done, we give the enemy opportunity to lie to us that God doesn't heal, doesn't care. But when we remind ourselves of the things that God has done it, if he did it before, he can do it again. Amen. Amen. If he did it before, he can do it again. Jason is 10 years old. I say he's 10 years what? Old. Growing strong and healthy. Because the Lord is glorifying himself through him. Wherever he goes, God's angels protecting him. It's a testimony. Can you hear me? It happened here because of what God is doing in this revival. As I share his testimony, 
We are redigging the well. We are redigging. We are redigging the well. We are plowing the ground to cause the well that raised him from the dead to bubble and come forth. Somebody say hallelujah. When I think of the things that the Lord has done for me, I'm going to praise him, praise him all day long. Amen. When I was worshiping, God told me to release the seraphim because the seraphim declares glory. The seraphim declares glory. The cherubim protect God has released his cherubims to protect the glory on the house. No voodoo, no curse, no spell, no hex, no jinx, no curse, no power, no spell, no army, no voodoo, no network can stop the glory on this house. Did you hear me? The devil tries to fight the testimony, but he will not succeed. Because God, who began the good work in us, shall be faithful to accomplish it. It is Jesus who heals the sick, it's Jesus who sets the captive free, it is Jesus who raises the dead. Let's give God the best clap of it. Who did this for you? Jesus. Who did this for you? Jesus. God bless you. Amen. Enjoy. Woo. Listen to this. You know, the Lord knows how to collect his testimonies. I, I, I wasn't planning to do that tonight. He said, talk about it. I said, okay. I'm talking about the things that God has done. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody say, let God arise and let his enemies scatter. Say one more time. Let God arise and let his enemies scatter. What the Lord has done, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I can not tell it all. Because God is the one that does these miracles. And we ought to give God glory. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, Jesus, you deserve the glory. And I'm going to ask Sister Cindy to come here. You. Amen. And Doodley, come here too. Come up here. He was running. Everybody said the works. Some said the works. Speak. Say the works. Speaks. When God does a miracle, it brings glory to his name. Come here. Now, the brother you see here used to be taller than this young lady here. He used to be taller. And then something happened. What happened? Um, Apostle prayed for me, and I grew two inches. So, <laughs> somehow, she outgrew him. You remember that? Yes. Everybody said, the works that the Lord does will always outstand, outshine what the enemy does. Somebody say, amen. We give God glory for increasing our sister's height. Somebody say amen. 
Isn't God amazing? Because he used to be taller and then suddenly she outgrew him. It happened instant. Was this Deerfield? Was it which it was Terra Beach? Where was that? Miami? Miami? He remembers. <laughs> hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Welcome you into the house. We like to welcome you into, into the, the house, house of the Lord. Lord. We're gonna celebrate together in the one of four. We're gonna sing, we're gonna dance, we're gonna clap our hands and glorify the Savior with our strength. We like to welcome you into the house of the Lord. We're gonna celebrate together in one of four. We're gonna sing, we're gonna dance, we're gonna clap our hands and glorify the Savior with our strength. We like to welcome you into the house of the Lord. you're going to do whatever it takes to glorify the Lord. <laughs> she received a creative miracle. I said she received what? A creative miracle. We are ridiculing the wells. People increasing in height. If you talk, if you ask this Samantha, we have a long list of people that want to grow tall. So one of these days I'm going to do a service for people to increase in height. Someone five inches one man wrote to me from India. He wants to marry his, this girl, but the family won't let him marry her because she's very short. So he just wants her to increase by two inches so the family can approve. You know, in India, the family has to approve, you know? So if she increases by two inches, then he's going to get a, his, his wife. Somebody say amen. So a lot of prayer requests. Like he sent a picture, everything. So you don't take this miracle lightly. It is God who does the miracles, and he does it, what? For his glory. We're going to hear one more testimony. Sister Rosette, come here. Amen. Now, uh, Sister Rosette has a very unusual testimony. Come up here. Uh, what I'm going to do is, just take the stairs. What I want to do is, I'm going to give her a little bit moment to talk about what the Lord did for her in a womb briefly. And then, is it possible you bring the boy tomorrow here? Okay, so briefly tell us what God did for you and how many miscarriages you had, what God did for you. Please hear this testimony. It's going to give you, it's going to shock you. This happened in this house. Um, depuis en 2010 chaque petit monde que moi enceinte parfois moi gagne dans cette deux fois dans année ou bien trois fois dans année moi perdre petit monde là 
um, chaque année, moi enceinte, moi perds du timon là. Même te compte toujours qu'il y a ça pour compte moi, je ne peux pas dire à Pasto. Um, L'aimer vivre en 2013 ou bien 2014. Donc, so, chaque petit monde est enceinte, moi perdu. Chaque petit monde est enceinte, moi ne peux pas me décourager. Je ne peux pas me dire, oh, um, do, pas tu as un connexion, je ne peux pas mourir ou pas ou pa mourir. Je me dis, je marche dans l'église par l'évangile, je me dis, je suis qui gagne cancer, guéri, qui mourit, levé. Et je me suis ça parce que je suis en HR, je me suis dit que ça Je me dit que je suis délivré quand même. Donc, après, je recevoir la prière dans mes apostoles. Je me perdu 15 miscarriages, tout ensemble. En 2018, bon Dieu béni, je me suis dit avec un bébé, qui est qu'on a ligué deux ans. L'aimé enceinte, mais chaque fois que je suis enceinte, je suis toujours en train de mauvais rêve, je suis en train de me faire mourir dans votre main. Tout le monde. Donc, en 2017, avant de sauter pour prier pour moi, je dit que je suis enceinte, je suis en train de me faire mourir. Moi, je fais trois mois, je ne sais pas si je connais mon enceinte. Maintenant, le docteur, docteur dit que je ne suis pas enceinte, je ne suis pas enceinte, je ne suis pas enceinte. Donc, je suis retourné encore, le docteur a dit que je suis trois mois enceinte. En plus, je fais tout le reste. Uh, go vent, moi pas j'aime faire aucun mauvais rêve, uh, rien pas j'aime rêver, moi bah bon Dieu gloire qu'on a le gain deux ans. Oui. <laughs> um, L'autre témoignage moi comme bah bon Dieu gloire, uh, petit moi t'as aller dans le collège, uh, moi t'es gain on a sur de 15 600 combien de dollars pour moi t'es payé um, chaque trimestre. Moi venir devant un pasteur, moi dire un pasteur, bah qu'on est ça pour me faire non mais combien quoi moi gain pour moi payer. Um, trois semaines passées avant d'y aller, qu'on a reçu mon col, il y a déjà pris d'un pour moi pour seulement 4 000 dollars. Je vais vous l'autre encore. <laughs> bon Dieu béni, moi, c'est avec un gros caï. A pas sauter qu'on toujours prier pour moi, pour moi, gros caï. Bon Dieu béni. <laughs> avec un gros caï, deux caï. Bon Dieu merci. Now, that, the, the three testimonies, the first one, how many miscarriages do you have? 15 mi miscarriages. 15 miscarriages, and then God gave her a handsome, strong, healthy baby boy. Let's clap to Jesus, because Jesus, you imagine suffering all those miscarriages, she never gave up. She kept on believing, and the Lord did it for her. Some say amen. And the second testimony, uh, was briefly about your son? Um, yes, um, his college. You remember when I come up to you and I say, Brother, um, I had to pay $15,600 yes. and you have prayed for me, they drop it down to $4,000. Come on, clap in for Jesus. Supernatural. Say supernatural. Supernatural. Supplies. Supplies. Provision. Provision. All glory belongs to Jesus. All glory belongs to Jesus. And in the third testimony, with a house. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Super nice. How many bedrooms? <laughs> three bedroom and it's like two acres. It's very big. Big house, three bedrooms, two acres. Clap hands for Jesus. God bless you. So, so make sure you bring the boy tomorrow. Amen. God bless you. Come on, Clive. Clap your hands for those testimonies. We are experiencing God's power Deliverance. We're redigging the wells. I'm going to prophesy and I'm going to minister as the Lord gives me guidance. We give God glory for the things He has done in this place through all the years. It is not a work of a man, but the work of the Holy Spirit. How many of you are, sh are so grateful for those testimonies? Live him more. Say, Father, we thank you. For those powerful testimonies. To you be the glory. In Jesus name. Now. Before I begin to preach. I want to share something so powerful. That is going to activate your faith. To believe God. To do mighty wonders in your life. The Bible say in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. 
Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18, the Bible says, But the Lord shall, but thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant, which is so unto thy fathers, as it is this day. God is a God of covenant. Read verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth. Ever say after me, remember the Lord. Remember the Lord thy God. Say one more time, remember the Lord your God. Now, in the economy we live in today, the system is governed and money. You found the scripture? You find it? Can you read it? Listen to this. The kingdom of God functions on seed time and harvest. God has never established his kingdom to function in poverty. Ever say after me, poverty is not tolerated in God's kingdom. Being broke, being bankrupt is not of the kingdom. Christians are not supposed to be beggars. Christians are supposed to be lenders. Can I mean God? Christians are supposed to be the ones that determine how the economy will operate. I was talking to a businessman earlier. We went to purchase some equipment. And he was telling me, even uh, Brandon was there, and he was telling us that even Amazon, because the competition is picking up, they're concerned they might have to file for bankruptcy in the near future. And many businesses are running out. The world is afraid. Amazon is a multi-billion dollar company. But the owner is afraid of somehow losing his business. Because they have neglected God. Once you neglect God, you become restricted in what you do. Finances don't Provide you with the air you breathe. What gives you the air you breathe is God's spirit. The Bible says, He breathed upon man and man became a living soul. The Holy Spirit is the breath we breathe. The reason why the world is trembling at the coronavirus. It's because it's affecting the economy. Not because of the death. People always die from other illnesses. Do you know more people die from hunger than the virus? More people die from starvation than the virus. But because it has struck fear, because it catches sporadic, it causes fear and causes stress. So people are dying, but what is scaring the people the most is the economy. It is affecting people's spending power. If people don't spend, the economy can't move. They're afraid to go to restaurants, they're afraid to go to bars, they're afraid to go hang out. So it affects the economy. But God is not affected by the virus. The shaking God has allowed to take place in the world. Can I go with you? 
Pastor Brown, quickly. The shaking that God has allowed to take place in the world is to prepare the church for the return of Jesus. Now, God says, Thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is He that gives you power to get wealth that He may establish His covenant. Thou shalt remember, remember, you put God first. The Lord wants you to put Him first. He's not, he has no problem blessing you. God wants to bless you, but you have to put Him first. The wealth of the wicked is going to transfer from their hands to the righteous. God knows where they're hiding it. Do you know the filthy rich of islands where they carry out perversions? They have islands where they import people into slavery, into sexual bondage. And they have their wealth. But God is shaking the world. And he's going to transfer the wealth of the wicked to the righteous. But we have to have a heart after God because we can't have a wicked mindset and expect to operate in the prosperity of God. The gospel must be preached. It costs money to preach the gospel. It costs money to rent auditoriums. It costs money to hire professionals. It costs money to operate the machine. God wants the gospel to be preached. So when he blesses you, he blesses you so you can be instrumental in financing the gospel. Let me hear the man. Are we live? Is the audio on? Can they hear me? Thank you. If we preach the gospel, we can't be begging I can't go to the crowd center and say, please, please give me the building so I can hold an event. I'll pray for you. They're not going to give it to me. I have to call them and say, how much is it? And they give me the quote. I say, send me the contract. They send me the contract. I sign, pay them. Someone say, amen. Then we have the facility. Someone say, amen. When we put up the billboards, it costs money. They're not free. We have to have resources and finances if we're going to advance the kingdom. You missed the place to clap to Jesus. God wants us to do billboards. They're not for strippers. Why should, be, why should strippers be the one on billboards? Half-naked women. No. We don't want to see, to see half-naked women on billboards. We want to see something that talks about the gospel. Somebody say amen. Can I hear me to that? So God is going to bless us so we can be the one that now can put up billboards, rent auditoriums, bring in the best sound crew, the best camera crew, the best. Jesus deserves the best. And we can reach millions. We are the one that God is going to bless so we can buy airtime on television, buy airtime on radio, buy airtime on satellites, and preach the gospel. Not much time is left. Christians, you have to change your mindset. Have a mindset of the kingdom. See things from the kingdom level. The heavens are not broke. If God can take Joseph from the pit and place Joseph in the Pharaoh's house as a prime minister and he saved a lot of food because he had a revelation and became the supply line, there is a shift that is coming. When nations are shaking at the pandemic and economic collapses, God is going to give believers strategy, ideas, innovations to be able to retain wealth, invest in the right location because they're operating under the God-given wisdom and guidance. Everybody said, God-given wisdom 
So God-given wisdom, God-given guidance. Believers, we should have no limit on God. God may bless you with your own bank. God may bless you with your own clothing line. God may bless you with your own investment. Properties. Because you have trusted him. So God will give you properties, but it begins from the first level of obedience. We tithe, we give, we honor God. We walk in the principle of fast fruit. Now the word tells you, invest, save, and spend some. Do you know the enemy knows how to attack your savings? I spoke to businessmen earlier. Even Brandon was there when he was speaking. He said when the pandemic hit and was a shutdown, all the businesses were shut down. He said he, they had to tap in their savings account. So as they tapped into their savings account, they, they ran out. Now they have to shut down their business and relocate. Because even, that, even as the business, the service cannot really sustain them. So if you rely on your understanding, your servants cannot sustain you in a time of drought. You need the supernatural hand of God to provide for you wisdom, strategy, and to locate your, the source of your problem. God will give you favor. God will give you provision. God will relocate and bring, God will bring resources to you. But it begins by you trusting him. So as you tithe, as you give, as you sow into the revival, into the move of God in this region, you are shifting things in your life, in your future, in your children, and your grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. Amen. The sister you had testify here, she spoke to me a few weeks ago, and she said she's struggling to tithe. And she says every time she tries to tithe, something happens. She eats the money. Every time she tries to tithe, she eats the money. She says she, she don't know what to do. I prayed for her. She began to tithe. Suddenly, her son is in college. Suddenly, she has a home. Applaud it. Before that, she was struggling to get a home. God now broke the curse. When we take care of God's work, when we put God first, God will do things like that. What could have cost her 15000 She only paid 4000 God wiped 11000 out of her. Perth. When we reject the revelation about tithing and giving, we become disabled. Let me say this as I finish. God is aware of your need. And is going to fix it. He's going to supply your need. But you have to trust him. Everybody say, I remember God. I'm not a beggar. Get my ashes ready. I'm not a beggar. Come on, say with authority. And I, 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 before I play. Say, so I'm not a beggar. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Say it again. Yeah, because you're not a beggar, God is going to give you provision. He's going to unlock resources, streams, ideas, 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 business plans, favor, supernatural provision, protection on your investments. Remind God of every seed you give. Remind God of your offering. God will remember what you did when you gave. And he will make things function in your favor. Someone say amen. We're going to sow into the revival tonight. Can I amen to that? We're going to give an offering to God tonight. So I'm going to ask the ushers to help us.
Let's get the ashes out to help us, please. Amen. Let's get more ashes to help us. They're going to give you an envelope. They're going to give you an envelope. They're going to give you an offering envelope. You could give with a credit card form. We also have a credit card machine. Can we find Sister Samantha to help us with the credit card machine? She's not available. Somebody could do it. I think she's getting the kids ready. Amen. So what you're going to do is uh, you, can, you can use the credit card machine to give. Amen. If you want to give by credit card machine or you want to write it on a form. Some of you, you want to write on a credit card form. They're going to give you a form. And you can use that form to place your donation on that form. We're going to step out of doubt and unbelief. We're going to step into faith. And we're going to release our faith and believe God to bless us. Because God is bigger than our need. Today as you give, I want you to think about something. God is not a waiter or waitress. God is not a, God is not a server in a restaurant. So God is not a server. So when you go to a restaurant... What most people do is they tip 10%. They tip 10% or whatever they choose to tip. Like give God some little change. Give God a dollar, 25 cents. Let's just, let me find something. No, no. When it comes to God, you have to purposefully give. You don't just go through the routine. Your purpose. Your purpose. I want you to purpose to give to God. Because you believe that the revival has been a blessing to you. To millions of people. Many people have been blessed. Not so many people are grateful to come and give testimony. Like the sisters came here. Most people, most people, when they get a miracle, you never see them again. They're not grateful. Or if they're grateful, they're not, they never remember to come and testify. But if we give thanks to God, it means we're grateful. Somebody say amen. Can I amen to that? Let me amen to that. So we're going to be grateful to God and we're going to sow into the revival tonight. Can I amen to that? Somebody say hallelujah. So ashes, give us an envelope. Give everybody an envelope. If you want to give by credit card machine, we have a machine over there. They're going to get the kids ready to dance. Bring the kids on if they're ready. Amen. While we're getting an offering ready. If you're writing a check, you can write your check to Power Evangelism. They're going to pull up the giving information on the screen. If you're watching by television, can you pop the information on the screen? Do we have the information on the screen? Perfect. Now, for those of you here, you could give by Cash App. You could give by Zelle. You could give by our website. You could give by mailing box. Whatever you choose to give. But the information is also on the screen. Now, if you need an envelope, they're going to give you an envelope. Glory to Jesus. We give God praise for the testimonies. Of those that God has blessed. You know, some people say, you know, just give what you feel like giving. The Bible says they just shall live by faith, not by feelings. We don't, we don't give because we feel something. We give because we have a revelation. Amen. While you're getting your offering ready, let me have the kids quickly come dance for the Lord. Do you have the kids ready? Can we bring them on now? Thank you very much. And if you made a pledge, you want to fulfill a pledge, they can't hear you, Brother Nestle. If you have a pledge and you want to fulfill it, you can bring it on the altar. The altar is open for you. Amen. You can roll it on the altar. 
Bring them on here, please. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. We are ready. Thank you. So while the kids are dancing, you can get your offering ready.
Thank you, kids. God bless you so much. Hallelujah. Let's give God a clap offering for what God is doing. Hallelujah. Say to you be the glory, Jesus. Lights, lights. Thank you, Jesus. Listen to this. Uh, holy offering as a father. I'm giving because I believe that you are a God that is more than enough. Say, so I believe that you are a God that is more than enough. I believe that you are God that is more than enough in Jesus' name. Amen. Ashes, go ahead and receive the offering. While Ashes are receiving the offering, I'm going to challenge 20 people here. You're going to do something that is called... Cause the axe to float again. You're going to stretch your hand to the deep end and recover the axe. Maybe you're watching me on television. You want to participate in the level of faith. In the, just lower the keyboard slightly, slightly. Thank you so they can hear the interpreter. So maybe you want to stretch your faith to dig deep in a revival. You see, when the prophet came to one of the sons, the, the, the servants of the prophet, the, 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 the axe, it was borrowed. It fell into the water. But they were able to cause it to recover supernaturally. This is a powerful move of God. Hold one second, please. Tell it. Wait right here. It's a powerful move of God because it's a powerful move of God. There is 20 people here that I'm going to challenge you to saw. May the axe float again seed. May the axe float again seed. We are not controlled by the economic systems of this world. We are sustained by our God who is a supernatural God. Can I remember that? He's a supernatural God. So this is what we're going to sow. We're going to sow a seed. And we're going to declare this seed. May the axe float again. It's an act of faith. And we're sowing into the breakthrough that God has prepared for us. It's a step of faith. Into the right direction. Let me have the envelopes. So I'll challenge 20 people that will sow a seed of $75. Come take the envelope right now. It's called the axe floor again. So step out of your seat. Come take the envelope. God bless you very much. God bless you very much. Keep coming. Step forward. Step forward quickly. Let your faith be released right now. You are stepping into the realm of the unusual as you release your seed. Let's get 19 people. Keep coming. Now you see what God is doing here is powerful. So we don't even have to pray about it. We just have to release our faith. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. Let your faith be released. Amen. This opportunity is also for the volunteers too. Yes, even as you help, you can also sow seed in that realm of faith in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Your faith is released. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. Let's, let's release our faith. God bless you very much. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. This is called float against seed. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. There is power in faith. That's why I'm not scared to take an offering when it comes to God's glory. Because the kingdom of God functions on seed time and harvest time. So we operate in the realm of supernatural provision. Don't doubt God. Believe God that your seed will cause your effectiveness to manifest. So keep coming. If you need a great card form, they'll give it to you. Lift your hand up. Amen. Let's keep coming. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. 
Amen, amen, amen. Let me have one of those forms. God bless you. Keep releasing your faith. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you very much. Let me get eight more people that will release their faith. Maybe you're watching online, you can do the same. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Let's clap for them. Come on, encourage them. Encourage them. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Glory to Jesus. We thank God for all of you that are sowing that seed. That is a statement of faith. You say, why do you call given name? Because you've got to determine your harvest. You have to determine your harvest. You say, what do you mean by that? It's a, it's a statement of faith. It's an act of faith. God rewards faith. We can expect something. Amen. The axe could have not flooded again if there was nothing planted on the water. Your seed can activate the harvest. When it's done in faith, God rewards faith. With a faith that is impossible to please God. Amen. Believe God that God's going to bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. 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 Amen. I got five more envelopes left. I believe that's the number I had is 20. So let's release our faith. Amen. Lift your hands up if you want. I can help Pastor Brown and bring you the envelope. Keep coming. Keep coming. God bless you. God bless you. There are men here who can also release their faith and believe God to bless you. Amen. Let's clap for a brother. God bless you. Lift your hand up. The, he will bring it to you. Keep your hand up. Amen. As your faith is released. Let's get four more people that will release their faith and activate the harvest. The way we give to God is we have to stretch our faith. When you see the news and you see unemployment lines and you see business running out, this will not affect you because you're a child of God. You put your faith and trust in God. The Lord will sustain you. Let me get three more people that will release their faith. God is a rewarder of those that seek him. But also when we give our offering sacrificially, we make a difference in somebody else's life. Amen. We're impacting somebody else in radio land, in television land, in another state, in another region. Because the gospel must be preached and the church will not be silenced. Let me an amen to that. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. The church will not be silenced because God wants to see our faith released. Our faith must be released. In the name of Jesus. May three more people that will activate their faith. Let's get two more people. Let's get two more people that will take the seed of faith and sow into the revival. We had those testimonies. They're such an encouragement. They're such a blessing. I'm going to pray for people tonight. I promise to pray for you. I'm going to do that shortly. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Let's get two more people that will release their faith. Two more people that will release their faith. And sow that seed. Maybe you didn't come with it today. You want to mail it to us. You can still take an envelope. And mail it to us. Amen. If you came with your pledge, you can bring it on the altar. You want to mail it or you can bring it tomorrow. You can still take the envelope. Amen. You're sowing a seed called Axe Float Again. May the yaks float again. In the name of Jesus. It's the effectiveness. It is the accuracy. It is, some of you want to come out of debt. And the enemy has been attacking you in that area. And you're in debt. You want to step out of debt. That's the time for you to release your seed. Jezi you merely tell ones. Jezi you merely tell ones. Namot.
Jesi umeli telua. Jesi umeli telua. Namota yo. Jesi umeli telua. Jesi umeli Jesus, who made it was Namotayo, Namaleo. Jesus, who made it was Jesus, who made it was Jesus, who made it was Namotayo. Amen. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory for giving us faith. I cannot hear you, brother. Can we make sure we can hear the brother? Is his mic on? Amen. Lift up your hands, Father. Increase my faith. Increase my faith. Ask him to increase your faith. I see fear. I rebuke fear. I see fear of poverty, fear of luck. I rebuke fear. I rebuke discouragement. The devil tried to steal your faith. The devil is a liar. Pastor Brown, can someone take care of that? Can you help me out? Let someone take care of that. Amen. Yes, come on, sir. Fear, go. Let fear leave right now in Jesus' name. Fear has to go. That's a spirit. It has to go. We are rested now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Guess what? Who's, who's, who's going to protect your income? Who's going to protect your wealth? Who's going to preserve you? Jesus. Begin to pray that God will increase your faith. When it comes to your finances, ask God to increase your faith. Ask God to increase your faith. Open your mouth. Ask him to increase your faith. Ask him to increase your faith. Ask him to increase your faith. So, Father, increase my faith. Father, increase my faith in the name of Jesus. So, I believe in miracles. I believe in God. In Jesus' name, let us give the Lord the best clap offering. Come on, you can do better than that for Jesus. Come on, you can. Applaud it, applaud it. Let's clap to Jesus. Come on. Come on, brother Steve, come here. Come on, clap your hands for Jesus. Come on. Let, let me hear you clap your hands for Jesus. Come on. Now, within 10 minutes, I'm going to begin to pray for people. I'm going to pray for you. But I got to share something briefly here. In Joshua chapter 1, Verse 8, please bear with me. I need 10 minutes. It might be even less than that. The Bible says in verse 8. Joshua chapter 1. This book of the law shall not depart from thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate on it day and night, that thou may be able to do according to what is written therein. For that thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and thou shalt have good success. This book of the law, Father, bless this word in Jesus' name. When we don't have the word, this light is in my face. You could just tilt it. Lavison, can you do that? 
when you don't have the word of God engrafted in your system, when it's not embedded in your system, the enemy can steal it from you. You see, the parable of the sower talks about when the word was released, some planted on good ground, rocky ground, thorny ground, and the enemy came and stole it. But he cannot steal a word that is planted in good ground. I want you to hear me today. God's word is medicine. God's word is authority. God's word is powerful. God's word is salt. You see what I mean by that? If we are the salt of the earth, what makes us salt? It is the word. Without the word, we are not the salt. The Bible says you shall met it on this day and night. Webs, can I use this? You shall meditate on it day and night. How do we meditate on God's word? How do we meditate on the word of God? It begins with prayer. Then it carries on with... It begins with prayer. When we pray according to the word, our spirit man enters into a different realm. Just turn the interpreter slightly down a bit because I'm using this mic so the house can hear me. When we pray according to his word, his gain, his gain, his gain slightly. God's word increases. It increases our level of expectation. When we pray, lift your, lift your hands up and say, according to his word. According to his word. Say, the word of God is powerful. It is a life changer. It's a life giver. It can transform nations, lives, and generations. When you study the word of God and you perceive how powerful it is, you will, ne you will never ever in your life doubt God. The reason why most people don't know how to pray is they pray according to, his un to the understanding. They pray according to their understanding. Your understanding is limited. Because it's limited, it cuts the flow. When your understanding is limited, because we are created in human form. What do you mean by that? God made us in his image, but we are human. Human means limited. Limited understanding, limited thinking. So your prayer lacks power if it is done according to your understanding. Your prayer carries power when it's done by revelation. Why are many people's prayers hindered number one they're in the flesh they have a carnal mind the carnal mind does not discern the things of the spirit ever say admire admire yearn passionately hunger for the word so this generation is distracted by the media by entertainment by the troubles of the world one time the lord told me i don't want you to watch news when you're about to go preach because the media is always can you hear me in the house can they hear me am i good can you hear me good 
Thank you. See, the world is controlled by the media. Fear. They're showing you people dying, showing you graves. Remember the saying that Florida was going to be like New York? I said, no. We stood here, we prayed, we said, no. I said, we said, no. We prayed. We canceled it. And God never allowed Florida to have those mass graves. There was no mass graves in Florida. It's not because of a carnival concert at the beach. It's not because of whatever. It's because God intercepted the plan of the enemy. He did not allow the virus to invade. Come on, give God praise. As I stand on the pulpit here in this revival, I want to say, if we are to continue in God's power, if we are to continue in God's glory, somebody say, Mashe. Say, walk in God's word. Say, Mashe. Walk in God's word. Your words lack power. But God's word carries power. To meditate means you ponder. You ponder on it. You activate it. You quote the scripture. You use it as reference. Can you have the kids sit down? Ashes, please. Thank you. Can you make sure there are no kids running in the hallway? Everybody out there, Pastor Brown, go help me out quickly. Let's shut the market out there in the back. Amen. Lift your hands up and say, I need the word. Say, I need the word. Come on, say it with authority. Say, I need the word. Now watch this. The spirit of the world hates the word. They'll tell you things like this. God is dead. He's not coming back for the church. You only live once. YOLO. That is false doctrine. They'll tell you things like when people die, oh, it's the will of God. The Bible says, why do you die before your time? There are many people that have died before their time. Most people only celebrate the death of people. They never celebrate their life when they're alive. Why do you wait until somebody dies to sh turn his law down a bit, please? To show people that God is, you, know, you are pleased with their life. Why do you wait until somebody's dead? If you are happy with somebody, do it while they're alive. Amen. To meditate is to let the word of God be exalted above human behavior, human understanding, human behavior. So the way people think, the way people do things is not the way God does things. God is different from man. So you see God as exalted high above men. When I came to preach in this revival, I faced opposition. Every type of battle was thrown at me. They gathered networks of radios, networks of churches, networks of witches, networks of people that were sent to frustrate to frustrate me so I can give up because you see if they can't stop you 
they're going to get you frustrated. So you can give up. But what I held unto was the word of God. God's word says, wherever the sole of your feet shall tread, I have given you. If your feet stayed there, I have given you. God says, this is your territory, son. I've given to you. I take the word of God more serious than my accusers. I take the word of God serious than the enemy. Let me tell you something here. God's word is more powerful than any witch, wizard, warlock, mambo, whatever there. If you believe the word of God, it will shut down all powers of hell. You missed a place to clap to Jesus. If you're sick in your body, the word of God says, by his stripes, you were healed. Amen. The Bible says, there is no enchantment against Israel. One time God woke me up and he showed me a multitude. He took me to this church, L'Eglise. It was a L'Eglise. And they were cursing me in Creole. And they were saying the name Power Evangelism. And they were saying Creole stuff, whatever. And God said, you see, they're cursing you. I said, thank you for showing me. I began to break the curse. Kraze, Madisho Kraze, Kotra Kraze, Mambo Kraze, Japula Lage, Hale, Soti. I began to break them. You people don't play. Hey, the, the witches fast and pray against churches, against marriages, against businesses. God told me, wage war. Don't sit back and just sleep. Put on a fight. You meditate on God's word. When you take God's word and act on it and use it and rely on it, you can shut down any curse. God showed me battles coming from witches, from religious Christians, because some people, they fight you, yet they're religious, but they're coming against you because the enemy has convinced them that you are wrong. They're your brothers. What made Esau and Jacob fight? They're brothers. Why are they fighting? Because the enemy is the one that causes brothers to fight brother. Do you get it? So once you identify the enemy, whether it is in the family or outside the family, you declare war. Because it's spirits that enter people to come against you. We have to apply the word to protect the glory. What drives the devil crazy is the glory on the house. It's not because we sing so well. It's not because we have a lot of instruments. It's not because we have buildings. No, it's because the glory is on the house. We have to stand on the word and say no weapon formed against us. You Christians that are here, don't you think the devil is happy that you are not involved in rituals of your ancestors like get it, like doing stuff, going to necromancy, feeding zombies. You don't feed zombies. You don't do stuff they used to do. You don't offer sacrifice. You don't do all that nonsense. The devil is mad. Why? Because you belong to Jesus. You made up your mind to follow Jesus all the days of your life. That is what drives the devil crazy. You have refused to serve your ancestors. And the devil is mad. But once you choose Jesus, you don't turn back to the enemy. 
This is what the Bible says. Joshua said, choose you this. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you shall serve. But as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. You don't belong to the clubs. You don't belong to covens. You don't belong to witches. You don't belong to sacrifice. You don't belong to networks of hell. You belong to Jesus. Because you serve the Lord, the devil hates you. Don't turn your back on Jesus. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I want to finish by saying this. The power of God is here. It's free. Say, I receive it. Say, the power is free. Say, the power is free. I receive it. So, I learned this in my spirit. And as I finish, God won't force you to receive a miracle. You have to believe to receive it. God won't force you to receive prayer. You have to believe to receive it. God will not force you to come out of the wheelchair. You have to want it. God won't force you to go to church. You have to want it. But you have to overcome fear. The Bible says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. God gave you life. The devil cannot take it from you. You have to hold on to that which God has given you. Give your life to Jesus. Devote yourself to God. The word of God says, He that began a good work in you shall be faithful to accomplish it. When the devil attacks you with discouragement, what does the Bible say? Put on the garment of praise. Put on the garment. Find the garment, slam it on, and begin to praise God. Remember what God said. I will never leave you, nor forsake you. He said, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll fear no evil. Thy rod and thy stuff, they comfort me. God is on my side. Take the word of God serious. God is on your side. Even when you're in pain, God is on your side. Even when you feel alone, God is on your side. Even when you feel like giving up, God is on your side. Even if nobody understands you, God is on your side. He said, I'll never leave you, not forsake you. Put your trust in me. He says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. Hallelujah. Did you hear the word? So when you pray, no God is on your side. God is going to hear your prayer. God is going to heal you. Come on, shout hallelujah. Let me hear some noise. Father, I give you praise. Father, I give you praise. Father, I give you praise. Think about Jesus. As I finish, 5,000 men. 5,000 men. Not counting the women, not counting the children, not counting the animals. How is he going to feed them? He took bread. What did he do? He gave thanks. And then he passed it on to the disciples. It began to multiply. Why? Because the Bible says, and God shall supply all our need according to his riches and glory. So when the Lord gave thanks, the angels were released to multiply the food. When you stand on the word of God, God will remember his promise and from his promise he shall answer you. Amen. How many of you are so grateful for the things that God has done in this revival? This is our 14th year here in Dera Beach. Clap your hands to Jesus. I'm going to say something. I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to pray for you in the next few minutes. 
the fire is about to fall into this place. Are you ready for the fire? Are you ready for the fire? Are you ready for the fire? Your passion is coming back. What the devil stole from you is coming back. What you desire you shall receive. What you expect you shall go with it. You didn't come here to go with nothing. You came here to get blessed. Take the word of God serious. I'm going to release that fire on you. Amen. You're going to go with a blessing. You're watching me get ready for something to come your way. Amen. The virus will not kill you. You shall live. Say, I believe. Amen. You see, I, was, I thought I was going to prophesy tonight about some things, but I've not been released to do that. So maybe I'll do that tomorrow. But what I want to do right now, I want to pray for you that God will increase your faith. Amen? That God releases fire. That God will increase your faith. The battle you've been facing wanted to steal the word from you. There are people here, my brother. There are people here. It's like all hell broke loose on you. It's like you've been going through a lot of things and nobody knows what you're dealing with. But God wants you to hear this. When you hold firm unto his word, it will sustain you. It will sustain you. Give me something. It will sustain you. God's word is incorruptible. It is infallible. You cannot manipulate it. God's word is powerful. God cannot and will not fail to bless those that trust him. Lift up your hands and say, Father, forgive me for the times I doubted your word. Father, forgive me for the times I did not believe. Father, forgive me for the times I questioned your promise. I'm in the right place where the fire has been released. I'm in the right atmosphere where the glory has been released. Redig, redig, release your fire in this place. Something else. Release your glory in this place. Release your power in this place. I am ready for a fresh anointing, for a fresh fire. Though the worlds are being shaken, though nations are being shaken, my hope is in you. My trust is in you. My faith is in you. I refuse to doubt. I refuse to give up. I refuse to question your methods your strategy, your operations. I trust you that all will be well with my soul. I am ready, Terry McCallman, I am ready for a fresh anointing, for a fresh fire, for a fresh touch, for a fresh glory. I'm ready for something new in Jesus' name. While your eyes are closed, if you're in this room 